Uh, so between the air shows, uh, the Winter Carnival, I was on the committee up there, the Optimist Club, uh, the Legion. You do the Fantasy of Lights? I'm actually the director of radio advertising for the Fantasy of Lights here in town now. Um, Cub leader for the 21st St. Thomas wow. scouting group. And then, of course, here for to make you guys... So you get to do a lot of the cool camera. stuff. That's the, the bottom it of it. It is. At times, though, it gets pretty hectic mm -hmm. because you, mm -hmm. uh, it, it's time consuming. You can't, you can't just volunteer and then do it for one or two times and then not show up. Well, like some I, people do. They, I know they do, but it, it's, <laughs> you know, it's bad because if you volunteer, you want to make a commitment of it, right? Mm -hmm. So why do so, you volunteer? You know, just for the sake of, I guess, just keeping busy. It's fun. Mm -hmm. The people you get to meet, like Roger's here. The, uh, you know, last two weeks ago, I did the uh, Jimmy Flynn uh, interview, and uh, that was kind of fun to be able to, uh, you know, to meet people and things, you know, different things going on in the community. So, you know, like you, Sean, you get to go and do s some cool spectacular stuff. stuff. And mm -hmm. Sarah, and some of the stuff we're working on for you guys later coming up. And, oh, it's, you it's know, lots of it's, fun. Absolutely. It is fun. It's, even the behind the scenes stuff is a lot of fun. So, yeah. So you do some, you've done some radio work. Yes, I did that too for two and a half years. I used to host a radio show, mm -hmm. uh, Saturday night show it was. What kind of show was it? Uh, it started originally as the top 25 country music countdown, oh and then it God. went, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but then actually it went to uh, straight live requests. It cool. Was, it was live, unedited. And unedited? I, unedited. You, just, you said that and blinked at the same time. It so was unedited. Let's say, it, let's say I was, <laughs> I had a couple of letters from my radio committee to say, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so but, what, were some, what were some of the craziest things that happened to you during that radio show? Um, Crazy well, we quests. actually, well, one of them, we had a contest one time where uh, we were actually giving away some bingo cards. And, uh, <laughs> oh, it was funny. And we had a race to the radio station. And yeah. uh, the people that were racing down the street and they, they came into the station, then they were almost into a fist fight coming through the door because they just wanted bingo cards. Wow. Trying to get bingo like, cards. Just bingo cards, yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's it's funny what people will do for... <laughs> no such thing as bad press. If they're fighting to get to you, you... <laughs> that's crazy. Well, that's somehow. what I always said. Even my theory, <laughs> if I got in trouble for doing certain things, you know, on our show, is like, oh, well, you know, I got people talking. So, well, that's true, for yeah, sure. Yeah. But, uh, no, I, even the interviews I got to do, like Kenny Rogers and Jason McCoy. And, wow. And um, cool. I interviewed uh, um, you know, a variety of different people, some of the... Uh, the um, kickboxing and, and uh, UFC people, we, we did some interviews with them. Oh, that's yeah, really Yeah, it was fun. fun. It was fun, yeah. Now, do you find having volunteered for some media organizations like TV and radio, does it make you want to get into those things as a career? You know, I, I often thought for a long time TV would be pretty cool to get mm -hmm. into. Um, Until you met us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but, you know, I, I did find running the camera, the behind the scenes stuff, I enjoy that a lot more, like uh, right. doing the remote stuff and you know I have done some reporting for the Ion Elgin show but um, yeah it's fun I mean you get to do different things but the behind the scenes stuff is a lot more I'll leave that up to you guys like the professionals right. well that's good because <laughs> we get antsy when we don't get in front of the camera enough <laughs> I know <laughs> the but it's, the it's so important for people to understand that I mean like to put on this television show last year or two years ago we had one person Mm -hmm. And then, which is Mar Goulding, who's amazing. She volunteers for everything too, and uh, she just seems to always be charged up on it and like, you know, mm -hmm. crazy for it. It's, it's it's so important. And then last year we had a couple more people. Now the studio is like a buzz with volunteers, and it's so important. It yeah, that, really, so. really makes the show so much better and makes our job a lot better too. Mm -hmm. Well, I think also you see what's happening to other radio stations, or uh, not radio, but TV stations. What's happening? And, uh, well, I guess radio stations are affected too, but especially in television. I think with Rogers too, supporting volunteers and, and them helping out, I think, is what makes this company that much better because it keeps costs low where they can still run and, and do stuff for the community and, you know, rely on the volunteers. So, so how do you, um, you're behind the scenes and you're doing camera work. Do you have experience in that or did they train you how to do that stuff at Rogers? Actually, no, the, the camera stuff was just, you know, the first time I was on this show was last year when we came in for the Fantasy Lights. Mm -hmm. And it was through talking to, to Andy Fleming, the producer here, that uh, how I got on doing the cameras. Up to that point, I never run studio cameras. Mm 
Really? None, none of that stuff, no. no. So that's so. really good to know for people out there who are thinking of maybe, yeah. you know, if they're interested in TV or interested in something, they don't have to necessarily have experience. You can you can learn it on No, the that's right. That, that's the whole program here is, is you can pick a field that you want to do or, you know, try different things. And, uh, you know, and like I, I, I said to my wife, I said the one-on-one -on -one workmanship I get with, with Andy and, and um, actually James Eldon is the... Uh, associate producer I mean it, it's great because uh, you know we don't have a lot of volunteers here in town mm -hmm. so you know wish it was more but mm -hmm. because there isn't I benefit that way because I get a lot more one-on-one -on -one time and uh, get some good pointers and stuff but you know what I tell for next week yeah definitely for people volunteer it's a great way to you know to get to know people in your community too so where do we go if we want to volunteer how do we find out what we can do where we can go the different resources available you know what, I, I would just say to them, pick, a, pick an area that you want to do, you know. Don't, I don't think you're necessarily, you know. The necessity of, of going to, say, a website to find a whole area to deal, you know, just pick something you like. That's the key if you're going to stay with it. Now, how, how important is that for, uh, for people to do something that they really like? I mean, get involved in something that they like. Does that really, do you find that things oh, that you've been most successful at as far as volunteering goes are the things that you're most interested in? Oh, by far, if yeah. you got to pick something you like. If you don't like it, you're not going to do a good job. You know, and that's theory in life too with your employment. If you pick a job that you hate, you're not going to put 100% into it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just going to want to go into your time and get out of there, right? But okay. volunteering is the same thing because it's a very important part of the community. Most things I think in this world run by volunteers now. You know, organizations rely on them. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. You know, that's a, that's a very important thing in this especially in today's economy, so. Yeah, and you make, you make a really good point. I mean, people volunteer and they think, you know, it's, it's just a volunteer, I'm not gonna get paid for it, and they sort of look at the small picture, but you could really make a lot of contacts and that could segue into What's a huge? really great career. The spin-off. So that's how Sarah started. Mm-hmm. You, you were a volunteer. Yeah, that's Rogers. how I got the job on camera, is I, um, I actually volunteered at Rogers oh, TV. I didn't, and then, I didn't know that, yeah. Yeah, and Did then you? now I met a producer and now I'm on TV, so <laughs> that works out. No, it, it is good, uh, you know, just the, the spin-off connections and, and that, that you get from volunteering. Is Great, what, well, is what makes it. well, we really appreciate you here on Rogers, and we have to take a quick break, so uh, sorry to do that, but we'll uh, see you here after the break on Rogers. <laughs> Thanks. Arlene. Thank you. Thank you. Next week marks the start of Volunteer Week at Rogers. For well over 30 years, Rogers TV has let individuals learn about television production and how to make TV. We would like to take a few minutes in our next story to tip the hat in the direction of Tony Bendel. Tony puts in many hours around the station, bringing viewers stories about our community. When you volunteer, you help someone in need. Research shows that when you do this regularly, your life will be longer, healthier, happier, and more meaningful. David Ayers, registered psychologist. All week long, organizations across Canada will take time to officially recognize and thank hardworking volunteers. Without them, many non-for-profit institutions could not afford to exist. He's the king of For the past six Ooh. months, Tony Bendel has been volunteering at Rogers TV. Whether it's getting coffee for the guests, setting up for daytime, or just chatting up the elderly to make them feel good, Tony is always there to help out when you need him. I enjoy it. It's something I want to do. It's, uh, I don't know, I've been doing it now for close to 25 years. And uh, just the feeling of being able to go out and participate, I mean, not just at Rogers, but all the different groups that I've been associated with over the years. Yeah. It, uh, it's a great way to, I don't know, I guess it's giving back to the community, but, you know, it's fun. It really is. It's fun. According to StatsCan, 45% of Canadians aged 15 years or older volunteer their time to charities and other non-for-profit organizations. Tony believes volunteering is a great way to meet people and to network. That's one of the number one things, I think, especially if you're out of work and the way today's economy is. If you're looking for work, volunteer, because you will get to meet so many different people, different groups, uh, word passes on. They get actually a chance to see how you work, how you 
handle yourself in the community and stuff. And that goes a long way more than just handing a resume to somebody. Tony says his time at Rogers TV has also steered him into a possible new career path. You know, I would love it. If I could go more into this as a career choice, I would definitely do it. I think in today's market, it's going to be pretty hard to do that because of station shutdowns and what's happening. But that's the good thing about Rogers is because of the volunteer program, they're able to keep going. I think they're going strong. They're, they are here. So um, I think it, just to be able to go out and do this stuff um, would be fun to do it as a career. If I could, I would for the sake of, uh, I would run studio camera thing. I would mind hosting a show but it would be something um, that I would more do in the field is camera and do the interviews and things like that. Now, if you think you'd like to volunteer for Rogers TV, go to www.rogerstv and click on the volunteer application form. Reporting from the St. Thomas studio, Andy Fleming, Ion Elgin. Smart Cousins. This Saturday night at Cool's Warehouse, you can catch me and a bunch of other people, including Big Daddy V at Pro Wrestling Extreme. We're very excited. And we've got James Forbes, also known as Rec, on our show once again. How's it going, James? Rec? It's going. It's going. Last time you were on our show, you were on a video segment where you uh, weren't so very nice to me. Well, that's because you got, you know, doing this a little too much, and I had to get in there and... <laughs> but the business talking? Yeah, me talking. Too, much. talking too much. This kind of yeah, sounds yeah. like he does I now. I said some things that he found offensive. A little bit offensive, yeah. I didn't like it, and I took care of it. Do you realize that's, that's one of the reasons we got a set like this? Because we used to have a little table that we all had to share. Now you're at a safe, distance, safe distance away from glass Sean. Table away. Well, it's probably a little bit better this way. <laughs> then I could stay away from him and uh, not get at him again. Okay. So we've got Big Daddy V coming. <laughs> He's been in WWE forever. Right. He's uh, started off like in the '80s as uh, Mabel. I, th I think I think it was maybe the early '90s as Mabel. 90s. He wrestled beforehand. I think maybe USWA somewhere in Memphis. We're 18 with Mabel in there. I think they're called the Black Knights or something along those lines. But yeah, he's been in the WWF for he's had a 15 lot of different, years, yeah, 20 years. Uh, incarnations. Wow. He keeps kind of going and coming back. So he's been um, Viscera, Mabel. Um, Big Daddy, Big Daddy v. v. He's had like a, a Playboy kind of thing for a little while. Yeah, he ran Sometimes a little bit Sometimes known as the with, Mastodon. Yeah, he ran a little bit with uh, that Playboy gimmick with Trish Stratus and Lillian Garcia. <laughs> so he has, he has an identity crisis. I think so, yeah. He's just, he doesn't know. Doesn't know who he is. Doesn't know. But he's, he's a, a star. Like he's a, he's a big name and always has been a big name in WWE. Um, ECW champion, of course, at mm -hmm. one point. And um, he's gigantic. He's huge. So people really have to come and see this guy. <laughs>